Hoi Da. I am Jessalyn. Let's dive into what's new in DevTools in Chrome 113, 4, and 5. The new HTTP header overrides feature allows you to define respond headers locally. Take a look at this page. There are two JSON results that failed to load. When we review the console logs for further details, the issue seems to be stemming from an absent course header. Traditionally, what you can do at this point is either wait or do the backend changes yourself. That takes time, especially if you don't have access to the actual web server. DevTools offer a quicker way to experiment with changes. Go to the network panel, click on the failed request. At the respond header section, hover over any properties and click the edit button to start overwrite it. You can edit any values of the existing headers or add a new one. Let's add the course header here and set it to allow all. Refresh the page and bam, the list is loaded. We can of course apply the same changes to another request. However, we can overwrite multiple requests at once. Click on this link to open the override file. The apply to properties accepts wildcards. Change it to apply to all JSON requests instead of just one. Reload the page and see, both results are now loaded successfully. Next, don't press Enter. Use the tab or right arrow key to auto-complete in the console instead. I know it's a behavior change, but we have a setting for that. In the console, type window.set. To accept the first suggestion, use the tab or the right arrow key. If you really prefer to use Enter, you can change the setting. Open the command menu, type Enter. You can enable this setting to accept autocomplete suggestion on Enter. Want to set a conditional breakpoint? We have a shortcut for that. Wait, what is a conditional breakpoint? Look at this for loop example. Let's say we want to debug the logic within the loop only when the number is equal to 50 or 60. Setting a breakpoint doesn't help us because it will pause every time when the number increases. A conditional breakpoint is the if else for debugging. Hold the command or control key and click on the line. Write your conditions in the editor, save it, and start debugging. Cool. Now the breakpoint only pauses when the number reaches 50 and 60. The performance panel has a couple of updates. When an interaction causes a page to become unresponsive, that is a poor user experience. The interactions to next pane metric, or IMP in short, is the upcoming core web vital metric that assesses a page's overall responsiveness. Open a performance trace. Click on an interaction. We added an IMP warning for slow user interactions in the summary tab. Apart from that, the experience track has been renamed to layout shifts. By the way, did you notice the web vital track is gone? No worries. Moving forward, use the timings track to view web vital information instead. You can find long tasks in the main track. Good news for developers who work on WebAssembly. DevTools now support debug C and C++ code in your Wasm applications by default. Unlike JavaScript, you need to install this extension. DevTools uses it to process the debugging information in the Wasm files. With the help of the extension, you will find C++ source files in your Wasm application. Open that to view the source. You can set the breakpoint and start debugging right away. We also improved the step over behavior. The debugger now avoids pausing in the Wasm the assembly file wherever possible. Go to this link if you want to learn more about Wasm debugging. Time for a bonus tip. You can visualize selector specificity in the styles pane. A selector weight is calculated and summarized into three numbers. That is ID, class, and type. Take this selector for example. There are two types, the div and a. Two classes, the primary CSS and the Howard pseudo class. Take note that an attribute selector is counted as class as well. If we replace primary with row button, it still makes up to two classes. There is no ID in these selectors, so their specificity is 0, 2, 2. 
Let's try one more calculation. This home link selector has only one ID. So its specificity is 100 exactly. Remember, the higher the number on the left always wins because it is more specific. In our case, the border of our hyperlink is solid. Let's jump into DevTools and inspect the hyperlink. Hover over the A selector, its specificity is 001. In this case, the color pink beats yellow because it has a more powerful ID selector. Based on these CSS declarations, can you guess what is the text and background color when I hover over it? 3, 2, 1, time's up. Let's inspect that with DevTools. The text color is still pink because ID is more specific. Since both hover selectors have a specificity of 0, 2, 2, whoever comes last wins. Therefore, the background is blue. All right, that's all for now. Don't forget to check out our blog post for more information. You know where to find the link. Thanks for watching. Follow me for more DevTools goodies and see you soon. Ciao!